Alrighty, so we got now the gannet advance here. So now I'm just going to show you what I basically do when I get here to the field. I normally will do, where I'm going to test my uh, drone for the day. I want to do as much as exercise as I can when you get your drone. So look for a nice open space as you can see. Uh, there's not too much land poles on this side. It's clear, there's no obstacles. I'm away from uh, buildings and stuff like that. And I want to make certain there's no magnetic interference. So I'm going to show you the pr procedure. I'll basically take it out here from uh, um, out of a box and then my setup. I'll have my radio ready. I'll take my Android phone that I've already got the uh, Android um, Sky Tower on it itself. That's the app that we will be using. I will show you how to set this also basically up. You got this awesome little uh, holder. You'll see it's been marked already uh, Gannett Advanced PX4. We got the return to launch here. That's when you do your RTL or return to home. That will be then your bait. This explains it nice here on this side here too. And then on the left hand side, you'll see that it's been marked uh, auto waypoints, uh, position alt, and then also loiter. Loiter is the position where it will be in GPS for the guys that knows the other type of drones. That's your GPS uh, um, word there, but we call it loiter. And then in the bottom here will be your camera. That will be this one. Camera uh, down and camera up. This will be in loiter position in the top here. Top will be loiter. In the middle will be position alt and then uh, auto waypoints. Uh, auto waypoints I'll explain to you just now how I get to work today. This little connection here has got its own little uh, bag here with a uh, micro USB, also S video uh, cable key. You're going to use this to do um, your settings for your video that you can have then feed back to you. The micro USB is also your charging. This is a 5 volt uh, charging unit. You got two lithium uh, batteries on this side. Uh, iron, that is a 3.7 volt. That's in, uh, plugged in, there's two of them. That basically gets charged through from here. The radio has got about plus minus 20 hours on standby with a charger. So if I'm coming out here and I'm going to fly, and even if you're going to fish, make certain that your batteries for <coughs> your uh, LiPo batteries uh, is being charged up to the full voltage, and then also your uh, radio, that it's also been charged. You don't want to get to the field and then when you fly, then there's no battery on this. But just to also just let you know is that uh, on this specific one, there is the failsafe, low protection on the low battery. Uh, then we'll come back, we'll drop the bait. And also if you lose a signal from your radio, it will come back. And um, so yeah, there's a lot of features that I will explain to you a little bit more. That are left for a little bit for last. On the top there is where the waypoints will be off. So I fly, I take off, I fly to the position where I want. You can then uh, click off to make a waypoint, click it back on. And then when you come and land or you switch your drone off, that waypoint is being registered to. Uh, just a caution, when you actually do that waypoint, make certain you're on the right height, because wherever you make the waypoint, that's where the drone will then come down and then come back onto it itself. If you do it too low, it will come back low. But keep it at about a good 30 meters to 35 meters, depending on your leader. So now after I've been flying for today, and I've done my waypoint, I'm happy there, and I don't want that one to uh, be any more there. Tomorrow I'm flying another site. While the drone is on, take this wheel that is clear waypoints. Roll it all the way down and then back while the drone is on. That will clear the waypoint. So I will explain to you also a little bit in this video how I actually fly and you can see what it will basically do. And then navigation when I actually arm it to auto, then it will go to that point when it's in the air. That's also the on and off button to switch it on. Keep it in and release. This is also the voltage that you can see for the drone uh, on the radio too, sorry, on the radio, that you have got um, one little light you need to charge. Four lights will be fully charged. And when it's beeping, the beeping is there to say that I'm not currently connected with the drone. Okay. I'm going to switch it off for now. I'm going to have my drone 
I'm going to just inspect my drone. That's just safety checks is very important for me. I would like to go through all the screws and see if everyone is there. I would go through this piece and see that my uh, release is set up uh, for what I wanted to be set up for the weight. And then also this little clip is not bent. If it's bent, go please go back to the dealer, ask them just to get one or just contact us at uh, Gannett itself or head office. Okay, so everything is working, I've made certain. You'll see in this one, specifically on the Gannett Advance, you got the membrane here. Let me just stand up a little bit. There we go. I'll show you there. You got this little membrane here. So when you are cleaning your drone, you don't want to spray any Mr. Min or any fluid on this little unit. Uh, because that is actually where it breathes through. So that the barometer that you got on the inside with this advanced uh, Pixhawk Mini 4, that it can actually breathe and then get the height and hold that height for you. If that's giving you a problem, you'll see that the drone will go up and down, up and down. Then we need to replace this little unit, the membrane. So the next one is also, I will look at my lens. My lens is good. And also go through your whole drone. Make certain there's nothing that's loose. And I will then clear every sand that's in my motors here. You can spin it a little bit. If there's anything, you're basically here. I'll just spin the motors. Look at it. It's like everything is there. Just take a little bit and see if the motors are loose. That's my safety checks that I normally do. That's my manual ones. Check it out. And then on the back, I'll then open it. Check on the inside, nothing loose. And what's nice about this one, the way you take it out here, you flip it over, put it down in there, you can see it's been recessed uh, perfectly there. You'll get your little arms, your legs that you got currently, there will be longer ones making uh, the scenery very shortly uh, on the web itself. You'll have basically three. You got one short one, you can see I've marked mine, so that I can identify. This little short one will be coming in front of you. Hold the drone, push it nicely down. Take the two longer ones. Click it in. Now, while it's there, you can all swing it around, or you can leave it like that. What I like to do is, and to test my battery. So, here's my battery checker. We're going to hold it this way for you so you guys can see it. This is where I'm going to have it plugged in. That way is the wrong way. You have to put your little plug all the way to the top and then you can really see what is the voltage. Okay, check the voltage. I'm quite happy with this. I'm going to do a bit of flying. I'll take my battery. I'm going to swing it around when the drone is like this and this cable is going to come in from this side. Push it all the way. In. Take my battery, plug it in nicely. You can see that I'm making sure that that XT60 is nicely fit in, and there's no wires that's loose on my little balance plug because if that is loose, that will cause the battery to um, give you some problems, most probably swell up or burn. But I'll explain that to you a little bit later. On this little cap, you'll see that's a little piece of foam. And then we got that little piece of the rubber in there. That's basically to make it airtight. We also use it to do testing for making certain that uh, it is watertight. So yeah, this is our plate. I'm going to bend down now, going to put it on here, and then nicely screw it in, making certain there's no contamination or any contamination of sand or leaves on it. And then first one. And in a second, push it all down and just a nice little clip. You don't have to go too over tight on it. You will strip, and when it's stripped, you'll basically have then problems that it's not sitting nicely. And then I will just go through the whole little hatch there, looking everything looks 100%. I am happy with this now. So, my next pre uh, procedure will be as follows I know that my phone is charged, I know my battery is charged. I also know that my radio is charged. In this case, I don't have any data on this one, so where I am now, it will not show. So you have to have in your app uh, or hotspot, or you can have data on. It will then automatically pick you up where's your home position. 
but you can also pre-program all your waypoints that you basically want to do for your next trip, where you're going to be. You can look that up and then start programming that. And even you can make your files up like that's your zone 2, 1, 2, 3 and 4. So pre-programming is definitely possible with uh, this advanced system that we currently kind of got on here. And also just by the way, the system here itself is also globally used. So there's a lot of guys knowing it, they trust this unit. Uh, I'm trusting this unit too, because I've worked with it for a long time and a lot of R&D on this little system. And I think you guys are going to be very happy and very satisfied. And then also what it will do too, is we got a black box system on this uh, Pixel 4, where it actually, every time when you start up or any problems that you're getting, it will be recorded on the flight controller black box. And that's quite nice because then we can see where the problems actually came in. And then we can work accordingly to that one, helping you guys out there uh, understanding what you have done wrong or where the system has gone wrong itself. Okay. So first things first, I'll switch the uh, phone on. And then my procedure will be as follows. Hold in a button, it's armed. I know the battery is on. Switch the drone on, and you'll see with the older systems, if you had to do this, you will have on the NASA or the turret, when you do this, the uh, drone will actually go to the point when you start up, it will fly to the wrong one. This will initialize when I put it down, and then calibrate automatically now. There we go. I've got a connection from my radio to my drone. Radio always first on, last off thrown then on okay and then what I'll do is I'm working here by Bluetooth I'm going to do now a GPS calibration I'm going to click on there this is a system that we're using the um, SkyDroid tower I'm just going to close it the process will be as follows go to my connections I'm going to then switch on I'm going to put the uh, Bluetooth on I see there it says to me, um, can it advance, click it, it's going to pair. I'm pairing now the radio to the drone that then communicates with the system. What's nice about this radio too, is that your video and the whole control system that you're going to have and uh, the ability to pitch up and down with your camera, your gimbal that you got on this advance, you will be able to do through from here and the video from this side. So go back to this point I've got a Bluetooth connection my pin is one two three four I will say then okay it will pay lock in I can just go out then now I connect to the SkyDroid unit you will then basically see that if you go to the top left click down you go to switch connections Swipe over, this is for your first time, over till you get to this point, enter it. Now I'm just telling the system on your phone, this is what it's going to be. I will click all the way up to the top, settings, and then I'm going to prep my interface, my user interface. And when gates, I'm going to click everything on there, go out, video preferences, it's set up. And just make certain everything is clicked on here. And go out again. I'll close it out again. Reconnecting. Now what I'll do, there's three dots here in the bottom of the net. I'll click that and just say OK. Or forget default device. Press connect. Here you'll see on the Bluetooth it's been popped up, you click it. Now I'm connected, you'll hear the beep. And now <coughs> you'll also you will also hear it's now repeating precisely what's happening with the system itself. So I'll put it on to my awesome little stand that I've got here. Then the procedure is as follows, if you can see. I'll click the top left again. And then I will do compass calibration. Now, your compass calibration 
you have to do only once. You can go over wherever the flying sites or fishing sites that you're going to be, and you do not need to calibrate your compass every time. Only when you get a toilet bowl, then do it. So, because what it does with this system, with a global uh, satellite system, it actually picks up it automatically or every time. So, it works as follows. Press calibrate. You hear it beeping? I'll put the phone down. <clears throat> then, I'm looking for the nose to go north. Since now the compass calibration, you can hear it's actually beeping. So my next movement will be, my nose is going to be forward on the drone, I uh, will turn. You'll also notice that I don't have the props on. This makes it so much easier to calibrate. There, I've got it there. So the next one will be for this side motor. And I'll flip it twice over. And then also over to this side. Click over. Now you can hear it says still calibration. Now it's for that motor. I'll swing it over till the unit tells me that it is done and finished. Go for the back to the north now. Now if you look at this here, GPS 3D lock and you'll go through and then swipe it over to the side and then roll it. You'll see that bar there running and when it's successful, there we go, we got it to six, the successful. Calibrated requires reboot. And uh, precisely it tells you what to do. So I'll put it down, reboot after calibration, switch off the drone, switch off the radio, close the app, wait about two seconds or so. Then what I'll do is I will switch on the radio again, then switch on the drone. And I can still move it in my hands, I'm not worried about it, the system has been designed. And I put it down, there you go, you hear even the ESCs and the servo peeping. If you move it, like I said, it will go back and push it down, you'll hear it's engaging. So now my next procedure, radio was on, I put the drone on. I've already got my Bluetooth connection now, so I don't have to do it. If this is the phone or the tablet you're going to use, then it's already connected. All I need to do now is connect. Connected. Connected. GPS 3D lock. There we go. So now what I'll do is I've done the calibration. I will basically then just wait for it. That takes about a minute. I've got a lock. You'll notice that the green light is now flashing like a slow single green light. If I click on the uh, GPS, there's my satellites, my HDOP. Will be just more locks on it and it will start flashing much faster. But you can still fly now. It's just the system requires all those three um, satellites making and locking it in. So here is my distance from home. That is my signal for uh, from my radio to my drone. This is the loiter. And just a caution, when I put on loiter here, that is this little switch, you'll see it will repeat also. Mode position hold. Mode auto, going for waypoint one. Mode loiter. Okay, so while you are flying, a lot of clients do this little mistake. They go and play on the um, phone, they click on loiter, you get a whole lot of parameters here. GPS 3 plus DG's lock. Do not go to this section and do land or anything like this, okay? So the reason for that is that we, you don't need it, you just need this little piece. We were working on this system, that that will be locked out totally from for you. Here's the battery voltage, you can see it's 17.2 and that's just a little bit more other sensors and setup that we don't actually need for your awesome system. Okay, so you can basically arm your drone from here. Droney is when you are flying and it can follow you, but you don't use it. But I'll show you and explain that a little bit later to you. This is your uh, GPS coordinates. You'll also see there's a little bit of a horizontal uh, sensor. And you'll see in the green, if I move forward, that it's actually horizontal. It will show you where it's there. Now, with this system, it's nice and equipped with actually a um, magnetic interference. How it works is, on the top here, remember when I went to the settings, I actually did all the wing gates and set that up. It gave a vibration. I click on it. 
Now, if there is any interference where you are in the air area and the drone is on, you will see this bar going up. You'll see when I put it up. Now you'll see the bar coming up a little more. So it's not too much. There we go. And it's giving you, warning you the whole time. So this will be also recorded while the drone is on and been flying. My pre-checks, when I slide from right to left, my pre-checks is also on the right hand side. And that will explain to me if everything is good to go. To this side, if you've got bad props and it's not vibrated, okay, it's vibrating or it's not balanced, or anything else is giving you a problem, the clipping will basically show up there. So when it starts vibrating, then it will just clip, 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 clip. And then if it's too much, the system will actually then go back and then drop the bait automatically, come back to you and land. And then that uh, um, data file will be then locked onto the black box system. So you can see I'm currently not at this point. We are not at the, co uh, the, the coast at this point. Uh, when I've got my data, it will then pick me up when I say to it, find me. Alrighty, on the top here too, that is my timer, my flight time. Every time when I start, it will start recording. And then we'll say how long have you been flying in the air when the drone is actually flying. Okay, so I've got basically set up on this side. Uh, hand settings, you're not going to worry, editor. That's where I can actually then pre-program uh, waypoints at home on my leisure and then say where I want to do for my next trip. That's when you got Wi-Fi or internet connection to do. Vehicle uh, history, it's just basically what has been flying and all that. So that's not uh, necessary. And then parameters, and this is where I would like you guys to really uh, not play too much around. This is where I can set the whole drone up. When you go on here, you are taking the risk of damaging your drone. And this is where you are liable. This can be bad for any of the uh, people around you, the businesses. Because if you set this up and you go through this, it's bad. So please, my advice to you is, guys, please do not play in the parameters. Checklist, I've showed you that. And then the accelerometer calibration. That is basically, if you really need to do it, uh, then it will just explain as the compass uh, explanation for you there. Okay, so I've got everything set up. Go back to uh, vehicle data and then I'm 100%. I'm going to also have my aerials when I take them out. Try not to force them too much. Normally the guys are pushing it to the front. If you are flying in this way, there's a dead spot here. You always want to try it into a 90 degree angle. Like that. So when I'm flying, it's always having connection here. So this is strong connections and it's also in a 90 degree. So you'll get longer distance on it itself. Alrighty. I've set that up and then the next thing will now be showing how I put the props up and then going to go for the flight. I've done all the checks, I've made certain everything is 100%. I'm at a lack of place here where I can see this, I can do some flying. So if I got in trouble, I can take over or let the drone then go into a fail safe and come back and land. So, like I said, you'll do the radio first again. Switch on the drone. Then I'm going to check the, uh, the props. Now with this carbon props, it's 13 inch props. I want to make certain that this is also quite uh, uh, tight. And it's not loose. There's no damage on the prop itself. I'm happy. And just a slight little push to hear if there's any cracks. That's good. And I'll do it with each of them. Just check, make certain, looks okay. No sand in this little uh, uh, quick release because that will damage the fret. When the fret is damaged, there's no uh, hold on the motor and then it will just free uh, spin the whole time. Do all four of them. Just check, everything looks good. No damage. Hence, looks good. You see, I already got a lock just by checking all those ones. <clears throat> now on these props, you'll notice there's a circle. This is your CW, that's your clockwise. CCW, anti-clockwise. Now, CCW has got no ring on the side here on the top, but that does have it. And you'll also notice on the quick release on the motor hub itself, it's got the same thing. So what I'll do is, I will take the motor. These motors here, in the front, the two is spinning inwards, and those two are spinning outwards. 
This is a uh, um, clockwise, so this means this motor is spinning there. I'm going to take the prop nicely, spin it there, hold the prop, and spin. I do not have to tighten this up. This is self-tightening. Now with this one, that's uh, CCW, counterclockwise. This motor means it's spinning this way. I will hold the prop nicely. Do not get it cross fret. Spin the motor. There we go. Next one here, also counterclockwise. Same thing. Clockwise. And that's the one way I do it. There's no obstacles, nothing wrong on this side. Already got a lock. My drone is ready yet to uh, be set up and do the flying. Now on this little uh, mechanism here, on a bait drop, you'll hear it engaging. This bullet, see it's tight there, and it's off. Okay, this is for adjusting according to what the bait that you actually want to load, that is your uh, payload. So you can do a test on that. There is a video for that one specifically that we're doing the setup. But I'm not going to worry about that yet. I'll then put the drone down. And then I will then get, go to my app. I've already pre uh, uh, set it up. Just connect. Connected. Now, now I've got telemetry. GPS 3 plus DG's lock. It tells already that I've got a good lock. You'll actually see that that. Um, so a uh, single green light that I had like was flashing slow. It's now a little bit faster. That just means I got all the satellites, good flight that I can uh, expect from. Everything is up 100% there. And then I can just also double check my voltage. Remember every time when you switch the drone off and you're replacing a battery, reboot the app. Otherwise you will get false information every time when you connect. So. Drone off, radio off, reboot app, come back and switch everything on again. Okay, so I've got it set up there. I'm looking, it looks like a good day. It's not too much wind. And then also, when you are flying and let's say, um, imaginary that is the sea. You do not want the wind to blow from your back into the sea when you do uh, uh, flying off your drone. What it will do is when you're trying to go back and it does an RTL, it actually has so much more force. This will force the battery to be used so much more. So try to get your uh, wind from your sides and even forward to you. Fly either into the wind to the sea, then what you're going with the wind into the sea. The procedure on this one, as with the NASAs and the turrets, you used to arm it in a broken V or a W. With this one specifically, I got a GPS lock. When I'm going to arm on this stick with my throttle is, it's my rudder. And this is also my pitch forward, going forward, sideways. I make certain that my RTL is not connected. If I had it accidentally on, Mode return to launch. you can hear it's repeating to you. This is what's nice about this system. It will tell you in what state you are. You'll just switch it off. Mode loiter. Mode loiter. So now what I'll do is I'll check everything. Everything is up to the top. Just push fast. The camera, I can tilt when I got the video in with the little wire. So I'm just showing you how it actually flies. I'm going to then push it down, hold it into the corner right. Yeah. Waypoints received. So when it says waypoints received, that is just that's normal programming, but it is nothing that's been set up yet. I will push the throttle up to the top. Hold it there. There you can see the hold on it itself. So this is at least a good 8 meters away from me. And there's no one running, no kids, no dogs. Safety first, guys. So then I'm slightly pushing with the right stick forward. And go up to the top. Do yourself a favor, get some lacquer height on it. Do that right there. Now I got a little bit of wind here from my back. I will slide it to the right. Stop. To the left, stop. And this is also whatever action you are putting into this uh, uh, um, gimbal is what you're going to get out. So if I wanted to go fast, so that's snappy, 
So for a good experience on this craft with the flight controller, go slow out. And faster and we come back slow. Then to your right and do some exercises with it. And you'll notice that the back of the drone is always facing me. So on my uh, um, throttle itself, if I do the yaw, slow yaw, I'm pushing slowly. And I keep it there, keep it there. If I go faster, we'll go faster. And slow down. So when you're doing your flying, you want to make certain that when you actually take off your line, go slow out and then faster. When you reach your waypoint or place, slow down. So this is an loiter. So what I will show you quickly, I'll come a little bit closer. You guys can actually see this. This is position alt and also what we call pendulum effect. So now you've got a long leader under there in the, in the bottom. And if I go in loiter, I push it to the side, leave it, it stops immediately. When I put it in position hold, I push the stick and I leave it, you see how it slows down. So now you've got the pendulum effect of the pendulum on the bottom, but it'll do it slows down with a delay and then slowing down the pendulum so you don't have that overshoot. Remember, input is what you are giving to it itself. Slow down, position hold. So I haven't uh, created any waypoints on this one yet. So I'm going to give you an idea. When you do an auto, it's going to say Flight mode change failed. Okay, so I haven't done it. I, so I've got in uh, loiter mode, I fly out. I'm getting to a point where I was, that's where I want to be. Look at my height when I actually make the waypoint. Waypoint, it's doing nothing yet. Now I'm going to pull it back to the side. I'm old make a yaw. Now I'm going to arm this from loiter position out all the way to uh, uh, auto for waypoint. Go for the waypoint. Mode auto, going for waypoint one. You'll see it will go to that height where it was. It's rested. Do not be afraid if you do not have control, you're actually in loiter. I can uh, auto. So you can see I can't move it. So if you want to come back, you dropped your bait. It's dropped. Then what you can do is go all the way back to loiter. You can bring it back. So you'll get more flights when you actually bring it back and land it yourself. This is why I say it's good exercise to do about 10 or 20 flights like this before you go fishing. So you can get uh, experience on it. So now I still have that position there. I made the position, go back to off. Oh, it's been recognized on the flight controller. So now if I come back, I come and land. Hold the throttle all the way down. Disarmed. It says disarmed, you know you're safe, now you can release. If I switch the drone off, and I switch the radio off, and I'm replacing the battery, and I did the app itself, I'm closing the app, put the radio on, put the drone on, and while it's getting its uh, lock there, go onto my app, connect, and it's connected. Now, I'm not going to switch it off now. I'm going to do the following. I want to go in for that waypoint again. So I will arm it through the radio. Yeah. Waypoints received. So now it's waypoints received. I push it all the way up. Now, if you're at this height and you're going to go all uh, forward, it will go from here and climb. So my suggestion is always go to a decent height. Now there, hit auto, because I've made this waypoint for today. We'll go for the waypoint, you'll see how it actually goes a little bit down, because that is the waypoint that I registered on the flight controller. Now it is there, then I drop, you'll see that I push it back to loiter, so that I still have control. And then what I can do is, I can do the RTL, return to launch. So from here, I'll just press the launch. Won't return to launch. So it'll climb up. You can see how nice and stable this system is in comparison with all the other flight controllers. This is what makes this uh, uh, Pixel Mini 4 and uh, so much more superior. For 7 meters, a little bit faster. You'll see it will slow down. 
and we'll come slowly down and I'm still in there no no stick inputs and we'll come down lock down switch off disarmed. and it's disarmed itself mm. now. now for argument I have now put the A in a position we have RTL in now let's say you forget that you, you put it on there you're starting up again down up not it repeats that it says there's something wrong what you do click a what lighter start it up waypoints received push it up forward to go for a waypoint up there to the top now I can repeat that one again so I'll just let it do its little section there there I am, got no control, well, I do have a your control, but no throttle up and down too. But when I take it out from auto to okay. loiter, I will have control. Now I'm going to push it back. So this is how I clear my waypoint. Today I've done my fishing, I'm happy that spot is good. If I like this one, I want to come back in a, a few days uh, from after I went with my uh, to my sepa and so you can actually then put it onto the top. But I'll give you a little bit of explanation how I do that specifically. But I'm not going to use this. I'm not going to load it. It was a fun day for this one. I'm going to turn this wheel that's all the way from the top. We'll clear my point while it's flying. I'll click it down and up again. Now, remember if I add a waypoint, if I put it into auto, it will go back there. Now, when you want to know that your waypoint is cleared, so that you're not accidentally flying from KZN back to Durban, or to, to uh, Cape Town, check this. It will say to you, Flight mode change failed. Okay, so that is how you're going to know that your waypoint is now clear. Now, the, the phone is nice when you're doing some flying. You forgot now your phone on your fishing trip. No one else is there, there's no data. You can fly this system without the phone too but you won't have video so we'll take the phone put it on one side and this is what makes this so unique specifically because this is not just an android phone operating system that you have to fly with the Gannet Advance so I don't have to hear it I know that I'm going to push down start the motors Okay, so it is repeating there. I'm just going to switch that cover off that we don't hear that. But you can see I'm doing it totally just with the drone. Right here. Go up to the top. I will be flying forward. And in any time when my battery is going to be low, it's going to do a first protection battery fail safe. If I switch this radio off, doesn't matter with a phone or with this one, I lose signal between my radio and my drone, or this battery becomes flat, or that one flat. I'm pushing it in. So you can switch this off. Remember, I got a GPS lock. It will climb. I'll show you that I am not flying, pushing it backwards. There's also no one flying with me in the back because this is my remote. We'll climb up, we'll turn it uh, face forward to me, go to the lock, and then over the sink in a nice decent uh, fast manner. Remember when it comes here to about 5 meters, we'll slow down, then we'll get this position there. There's no ground on effect on this one too. Down, switched off. And now I'll switch the radio on. I want you to see that that is totally off. I'll switch it on. You can hear the drone actually now beeping to you. So there is beeping noise, buzzer. That actually tells you that you are connected. If you want to make certain that it is connected, just switch. I don't know if you can hear that, but the beep is definitely there. So I'll push it up back again, make certain that my RTL is off, 
push it down into the corner. I hear beep. That means that that flashing green light is now solid. This is how you can see visually that you actually do have a connection. So when you got a solid light, you hear a beep. You and the motor spin, it's there. Throttle up, don't play around, leave it there. You can see it's also spring loaded. I can do it any on there. So I'm being now aggressive with this drone. But remember, for good experience in your drone, to be safe and also not to damage your drone, be gentle with it. It's an investment that you're making for life. And this uh, flight controller that you've got here is there for you guys and that we know that you are getting a decent unit that you're going to enjoy for life, for sure. Just maintain it. We'll have some pieces where we can actually explain to you precisely how to clean it up. Now, what I'm going to do with this one, some guys are doing this, it's still quite interesting that it's been done quite a bit. We're going to land. I'm going to switch off in the corner left. Please do not, when your arm, go with the NASA or, uh, or with the turret system where you had to disarm. Try to learn. This is why I want you guys to go out to the field and learn one arming system. Because if you were down on the ground about half a meter and you actually dently go down and you do that, guess what? You are the cause of that damaged craft. And then also, I can actually, with the Bluetooth, with the um, uh, black box in there, I can see every stick motion, every little bit that you do, where you're actually flying. And this is what makes it so unique, that we've got control over your drone, and you got control. So the more you fly, the better you become, knowing what the craft wants from you. So, like I promised you, I'm taking off there. Wait for it to arm. I'm going to go up into that spot to about there. I'm going to take out these batteries. Not one, because it's still on, but two. Now the radio is totally off. It comes up, not to 20 meters, but it's hitting a pulse and it will come down. With a NASA and the other controllers, if you had to do this, it will shoot up in the air. This doesn't do it. Then I'll put it back, make it certain everything is in again. Switch radio on. Connect it. We'll start up again. Because if I didn't have a GPS lock, it will not start up. So with that one, now I've come to my point where the battery is actually at a point where it's in a fail point, a fail safe point. So 14.8 is where it will be and say, okay, uh, this is where I'm not going to start up. You can check now with the multimeter of your little uh, battery checker. You'll go there and you'll see that it will not start up. So when you do not get a GPS lock, go and check your battery because your battery is most probably not charged or was one that you have flown with before and you didn't realize that that was your first battery out of the 10 that you have or 5. So check your batteries, mark them, put them one that you know and have record that you got it in there. But now we've got that safety point for you in this drone, the uh, Gunnet Advance, that makes certain that if you accidentally do that, because you are focusing to go and fish, enjoy your fishing, that that will be a safety point. So yeah, uh, this is about uh, um, almost most of the stuff that I can uh, tell you a little bit more. And I will have some videos up, the guys will have some videos up, explanations, and um, a lot of stuff on the internet. And check the videos out, they will help quite a bit. Thank you.